Hello everyone and welcome back for some more Drag Race gossip, secrets and drama. So I'm back for another Roscoe's recap and this viewing party was for season 16 episode 4 and the guests this week were a mandatory meeting and Mirage. Also, I know a lot of you were asking if I was going to keep doing Roscoe's recaps this season. I did do one for episode one, but then the other viewing parties didn't really have that much to talk about because there were no guests from season 16, so I decided just not to do them, and I did announce this on my channel. But now it looks like Roscoe's is going to have more season 16 queens as guests, I will continue my Roscoe's recaps. So today we're going to be talking about why Mirage was shocked about her elimination and she didn't have an exit line, whether Mirage thinks that her being put in the bottom was rigged by production, and a mandatory meeting reveals her true feelings about plain Jane. All that and more coming up in today's video, so let's get started. So host Nasha Lopez started off by asking Amanda to clear up a meme that was going around about her. So these photos were shared and they were apparently of Amanda when she was in college and people online couldn't believe that these photos really were of Amanda and Nasha asked if that was really her. Amanda joked and said that the photos were of her dead twin brother but then she said quote yeah that's me girl. Amanda went on to explain that those photos were from her college senior showcase musical theatre reel which was a different lifetime ago. And just as some extra information that happened after Roscoe's, I saw on Twitter yesterday that Amanda came out as trans in an interview with Entertainment Weekly. And Amanda said in the interview that she got divorced because her ex-spouse wasn't supportive of her gender journey. And when they filmed season 16, it was only about five months after her divorce. So she was still in her healing process at the time. Amanda also said she's not really interested in people who want to hook up with her based on what she used to look like. And since transitioning, she feels much more confident in her own skin. And I'm sure I speak for everyone when I say congratulations to Amanda. Back to Roscoe's and host Batty Davis then brought up the Raider Queen twist that happened at the beginning of the season and asked how the queens felt about it. Mirage said she rated the queens from her premiere group as the first seven because she's loyal and she knew all of them. And even though Nymphia, in her opinion, did the best in the ball, she put her eighth because she wanted to prioritise the queens from her premiere. And Amanda said the reason she put Q number one instead of Nymphia is because Q helped Amanda finish her outfit for the ball. Host Caramel then asked if they were surprised when they found out how people voted in the Raider Queen, and it's implied that they were referring to Plain Jane, who flipped the voting on its head and put the top queen at the bottom and vice versa. And Amanda put on a high-pitched voice and said, quote, You know, I think everyone probably voted the way that they would be expected to. And everyone laughed. Nasha then asked if they would have changed any of their votes for the Raider Queen after having watched the episode. And Mirage said she probably would have done what Plain Jane did and put herself first. But she was trying to be, quote, nice and congenial, so she didn't. And I'd like to take a moment to say thank you to the sponsor of this video, Holtzcan. Holtzkern is a really cool watch, jewellery and accessory brand from Austria that incorporates wood into all of its products. Holtzkern is the German word for wood core and you can see that the wood is a theme that runs throughout all of their products such as watches, sunglasses, handbags, jewellery and much more. And Holtzkern were kind enough to send me three of their amazing products. This is the Carlos watch, and it's hard to believe that this is made of wood. I love the natural colours and the sleek design, and it just goes with everything. And now that I live in Australia, it's very important to protect your eyes from the sun. And Holtzcam were kind enough to send me the Achiever sunglasses, so you can achieve the height of fashion. And I also got the Comedian sunglasses. Yes, that is the real name. And I can imagine these would come in very handy on Drag Race to reflect some of that shade in the reading challenge. And if you see anything that your loved one might like, there's guaranteed shipping for Valentine's Day if you order before the 11th of February. And to sweeten the deal even more, if you use my code DTS15 at checkout, you'll get 15% off at Holtzcam. Check the link in the description or in the pinned comment. And thanks again to Holtzcam for sponsoring this video. They then talked about the moment in this episode when the queens were picking their roles for the RDR Live and Amanda said it was incredibly quote loud and intense. 
And Mirage said it was actually much more tense than what they showed in the episode, and she was gagged that they didn't show it all. And the reason why Mirage was so quiet during that is because, quote, there was a lot of personalities in the room and I'm not the bulldozer type. Nasha then mentioned the tension that there had been between Amanda and Plain Jane in the episode before and asked whether any of that had trickled over into this episode. And Amanda said yes, and when they were picking roles, she originally was looking at the skit with the two bimbos who owned the deck company. And then when Plain Jane said that she was going to do it, Amanda then switched and decided to be a news anchor instead. And then Amanda added, quote, we were not talking to each other. They then moved on to the part in the episode with the walkthrough with RuPaul, and Nasha mentioned that Safira Crystal had kind of thrown Mirage under the bus by saying to Ru that Mirage didn't originally want the role of host. Mirage joked and said that she felt, quote, very attacked, which is of course a reference to Laganja Estranja during Untucked on season 6. But Mirage said that she knew that Safira was going to do that, and she thinks that Safira did it deliberately because she's a very smart competitor. But Mirage added that they're fine now and there are no hard feelings. But she said that Safira is just very honest and sometimes it comes across a certain way. But then both Mirage and Amanda said that the entire cast are just very honest and are not afraid to express their opinions. Nasha then asked about the talent show from episode 1 and asked Amanda how she came up with her Where's My Kitty song. Amanda explained that she used to be married and she and her ex-husband had a cat, but they got divorced and her husband kept the cat and she misses the cat all the time. And then one time Amanda was sitting in her apartment, quote, stoned out of my mind, and she took a shower and said, quote, where's my kitty? And she recorded her saying it, clipped it into 60 seconds, and then that became the track for the talent show. Caramel then asked them who were their favourites from the talent show from the second premiere group, and they both said Nymphia and Plasma. And then Caramel asked if they agreed with Plain Jane winning, and Mirage said no and laughed. And Mirage then said, quote, I'm kidding, no, she played the game, you can't hate her for that, I guess. You can hate her for a couple other things, but for that, I'm going to give her credit, she did that, she won. They then moved on to the RDR live performance, and Nasha said that they also did this on All Stars 8, which Nasha was on. And Nasha said that on All Stars 8, they didn't tell the queens until right before the taping that there would be a teleprompter. And this affected the queens picking roles, because the queens thought that they would have to memorise all the lines, but in fact, some of them didn't because there was a teleprompter. And Nasha said that she heard that on season 16, the queens found out straight away that there was a teleprompter and asked if that was true. But Mirage and Amanda said that they couldn't remember when they found out. Nasha then said that in the challenge, they said that they would do it in one take, but on All Stars 8, there were a couple of queens who did it more than once, and she asked if it was the same on season 16. And Mirage and Amanda both paused, and it looked like they were going to reply at the same time, and Mirage said yes, and then Amanda said that she didn't know. And Mirage looked shocked, and everyone laughed, because Mirage clearly thought that Amanda was also going to say yes, but she didn't. But Amanda said that she didn't get to watch any of the other groups, but her group did only do it in one take. And Mirage did not give any more details about her answer. Batty then asked what was the hardest part of filming the RDR live sketch, and Mirage said she didn't realise how much the lack of audience would affect your hosting, because no one's there to laugh at the jokes, and this affected the way that she hosted. And Mirage thought that she had done a good job after she filmed it. They then moved on to the runway for this week, and the category was a look inspired by the singer Cher. And Nasha asked if the looks that they had on the runway were their original choice, and both Amanda and Mirage said no. And Amanda said that she was originally going to do the look that Plain Jane did, but then was told that she'd have to pick something different. Just to explain, we've heard on Drag Race before that often, when the queens have to do a runway look inspired by someone else, the images that they use as reference images in the episodes have to be on Getty images for copyright reasons. And this is why the photos are often of red carpet looks and not something from a music video because that's copyrighted. And we've heard before that queens have to pick an outfit that they want ahead of time, but if another queen chooses the same reference image before, the queens are told they need to pick another image. And this is presumably to avoid a situation like what happened on season 8 with the kimono gate, when several queens wore a kimono for the Madonna runway. 
Anyway, Mirage said that she found a reference image for her outfit that she did wear and decided to pick it because she felt like she could easily make that outfit herself. And she confirmed that she did make the outfit herself and Anitra from season 15, who is Mirage's drag sister, helped Mirage to stone the outfit. They then talked about the critique that Mirage got for her runway look, that the hair was from the 60s but the outfit was from the 70s. And Naisha said, quote, Every now and then they're really stupid about some bleep and they really try and find something stupid. And Mirage said that she had originally tried to do a flat wig like in the original image, but it made her look like Morticia Adams, which is why she decided to go with bangs instead. And Mirage said that when it comes to either historical accuracy or looking hot, she's going to choose looking hot. They then got to the moment in the episode when Mirage was eliminated and everyone stood up and clapped and cheered for Mirage. They then watched Untucked and Naisha asked Amanda what it was like on set when she had multiple people critiquing her drag and the way that she looked. Amanda explained that, as I mentioned earlier, she was only five months out of her divorce when they filmed the show, so her emotions were already heightened. And on top of that, she had five designers who were doing runway looks for her, and they all, quote, effed her over. So Amanda came to the show with five unfinished looks, which she had to try and finish every night in the hotel room, which was causing her even more stress. And Amanda said that even when Safira had said to her during Untucked that her personality was better than her drag, she didn't take it as a read and she took it as sisterly love because Safira is very motherly. But then Amanda said that other people's critiques were not, and it's implied that she was talking about plain Jane. They also talked about the moment in Untucked when the previous feud between Amanda and Plain Jane was brought up again. And Naisha said that she can understand why Plain Jane apologised and then said that she didn't want to keep apologising. But she also felt like Amanda still wanted to let Plain Jane have it and talk about it again. And Amanda said she didn't care enough about Plain Jane in that moment to let her have it. And Amanda was just there for herself and she didn't care what Plain Jane thought about her. Naisha also asked whether the other queens were kind of instigating the situation and getting Amanda and Plain Jane to talk. And Mirage said no and said that she was surprised that they were still talking about it even though the argument had happened days earlier. And then Mirage joked and said, quote, Okay girl, we know she's ugly, get over it. And everyone laughed, including Amanda. And Amanda said about Plain Jane, quote, Damn, if you're going to call me ugly so much, just come over and help. And Batty made the observation that when Amanda first came into the workroom on the first episode, she was really excited and was fangirling over the other contestants, which probably made Amanda look vulnerable, and Amanda agreed. But Batty said that Amanda deserved to be there just as much as the other contestants, and everyone clapped for Amanda. Caramel then asked Amanda how she and Plain Jane are now. And Amanda put on a kind of businesswoman voice and said, quote, Plain Jane is my co-worker and I treat Plain Jane with the respect that I would afford any co-worker. And everyone laughed. Naisha then asked Mirage about the moment in Untucked when Mirage said that she didn't know the words to the lip sync song and how she was feeling. And Mirage said she knew that she was going to be in the bottom two because when Maya Iman LePage had done her impression of Cher and it sounded more like Kermit the Frog, Mirage said that she had never heard RuPaul laugh that hard. And apparently they even cut some of it out. And Mirage said that RuPaul was, quote, cackling. Naja then asked if the two of them had any regrets from the show and asked Mirage about not knowing the words to the song. And Mirage had said, quote, it could have been any other song because Mirage learned all of the other lip syncs but apparently didn't know that particular song which was Dark Lady by Cher. And Mirage said that she knows she's going to get read by everyone but she had never heard of that song and the only part that she knew was the bit from the chorus where it goes... <laughs> Caramel then said that Naysha had previously brought up a good point that on Drag Race, the mics are always on, even when they're backstage. And Caramel asked Amanda if she thought that because Mirage had said during Untucked that she didn't know the words to the song, does she think that that's why Mirage was put in the bottom? Amanda said that she couldn't speak to that, but when they were backstage and Mirage said to Amanda that she didn't know the words, Amanda apparently said, quote, Girl, you're mic'd, shut the F up. And Mirage laughed and said that she kept forgetting that she was on TV and she was just having fun. Mirage also said that she did know the first two verses of the song, but for that part they showed Geneva. And then Mirage made a funny face and Amanda said, quote, sabotage and everyone laughed. 
Naysha also said that at one point, Ross Matthews had quoted something back to one of the queens that they had said backstage. And Naysha said, quote, you're not safe back there and everything you say is noted. They then moved on to the Q&A and someone asked Mirage if she would ever go back for an All Stars. And Mirage said it definitely would not be a no because she feels like she didn't do that well the first time and she'd like to go back to prove herself. But she wants to leave it for a while so she can grow and get more experience. An audience member then asked if Mirage regretted not having an exit line because in the episode Mirage was crying and just walked off stage and didn't say an exit line. Mirage joked that she didn't prepare an exit line because she was not prepared to leave. But Mirage said that even if she had had an exit line, she just wanted to get out of there because she was crying and quote, it was so embarrassing because she hates crying. Mirage also said that she didn't realise that that would be the last time that you get to speak to the other queens and when you walk off stage, that's the last time you see them. And Mirage said that she was quote, gagged. But Mirage said, quote, that kind of hurt my feelings. I literally have to go back home and like stew on this for a year. Another audience member then said that Amanda had been getting a lot of hate from Plain Jane over the episodes, but asked who on the cast was the most supportive of Amanda's growth. And Amanda said, quote, I would say everyone except for her. And everyone laughed. And Amanda said that it was a very supportive atmosphere whenever she and Plain Jane were far apart. And then finally, an audience member said that with Plain Jane's introduction into Drag Race, there has been a lot of talk about what qualifies as shade and what qualifies as mean. And they asked the queens what their thoughts were on this topic. Amanda said it's all about nuance and in the moment when Plain Jane criticised her in Untucked, she and Plain Jane didn't have any kind of relationship, so it just came off mean rather than sisterly. And the situation and the delivery are also important. Mirage then said, quote, there has to be a joke. And Amanda said, it's okay for something to be mean as long as it's funny. And Amanda also said, quote, just saying the meanest thing you can think of in that moment is not necessarily funny. Batty then said that she wanted to hear from one of the shadiest queens that she knows and she looked over at Naysha. And then Naysha pretended to look over her shoulder as if she didn't know who Batty was talking about and everyone laughed and cheered. Naysha then said it's really simple for her and she said in her opinion it's all about timing. And Naysha said quote, there's a time and place for everything. If plain Jane would have said that at a different time where the conversation was open to criticism it would have been received differently. Naysha also said you need to know when it's okay to throw shade and when we're being serious. And when plain Jane said what she said it was not the right time and it came across as quote hateful. So there you go, there was my Roscoe's recap for season 16 episode 4. Let me know in the comments what you thought about Mirage's elimination this week. And who are you rooting for in season 16? And thanks again to Holtzken for sponsoring this video. If you use my code DTS15 at checkout, you'll get 15% off at Holtzcam. Check the link in the description or in the pinned comment. And I'd like to give a shout out to all of my amazing Patreon members. And in the Euro Winner Baby tier, we have Christian, Emerald1508, Ethan, Lisa, PC Smush, and Rochelle. And in the Shantae You Stay tier, we have Amy, Becky, Charlie, David, JJ, Kylie, Linda, and Craig. Thank you so much to my patrons. You're all incredible and your support really does make such a difference to my channel. So thank you so, so much for being part of my community. And if you'd like to get early access to my videos such as this one, as well as a raft of other benefits, please consider joining my Patreon and supporting my channel. And I'll put a link in the description. Please make sure you like, comment and share this video as it really helps support my channel. And of course, please make sure you hit the subscribe button to stay up to date about new uploads. Thanks again for watching and I hope you'll join me again in future videos. Thank you, bye!